Welcome, guys. Welcome to the Fat Podcast. We've got a very special guest here with us today. He is uh, placed second at the IFBB Arnold's just a couple weeks back. He won the 2019 Niagara Falls, been to the Olympia three times, and he was one of the youngest pros or one of the, the, the one of the youngest competitors to turn pro. Uh, yeah. We got which we got here for you guys the phenomenal Rough Diesel. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, man? I like the uh, I like the intro. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> That's what's up. How you doing right now? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I just um got back from my storage unit. I uh, made a little gym in there. I had to put together some uh, some gym equipment. And I just made it back home. But uh, yeah, I'm good. Inside of the storage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm training out of there right now. Yeah. You gotta do what you got to do. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. So That's yeah. dedication. <laughs> That's the man that's gonna win the Olympia this year because no one else is is doing that. Shit. <laughs> you must be got a you got a nice size storage. Must be. Yeah, it's, it's a ten by thirty, so it's like three hundred. So it's not big, but it's enough. I got enough stuff in there to get it done. I got like a a, a Smith, like a hat squat, um, lat pull down, and row machine, and uh, and like a natural like a T bar row setup. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and I got a uh, leg curl. I got a leg curl too. So yeah, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. not playing. Yeah, nah, this man. Well, you know, I've been watching all your, like all your interviews for the past couple of days now, and it's like you know you put on twenty pounds of mu- of, uh, of muscle in the last like year or two. So, I mean, damn, it seemed like you about to continue that trend. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to, man. Trying to, um, you know, make things happen. You know, you know, can't sit around. You know, letting life. Uh, Get you down. You got to figure out how to make it work, man. You know, lemonade yeah. out of limits and all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, how are you doing with? I mean, given the fact that everything is shut down, like you had a bunch of uh, events. I know you were trying to do another show, some seminars and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How's this this event like? Just kind of changed everything. <laughs> yeah, it did. You know, this was honestly like, yeah, this lit was looking really good. Um, you know, like I've been a pro for uh, since 2014, so that's six, it's almost almost six years now. And um, honestly, this was like the first year that I felt like you know everything was getting to a certain level, you know, of uh, a certain level that I kind of wanted, you know, and where most people expect pros to be when they most people expect like everything to happen when you first turn pro, but it, you know, nah, it don't happen that way. Nothing really changes, um, but like what most people think of pro life is was kind of like where it was getting at this year. Um, I had like at least two events set up each month, um, all the way up until October. And, um, yeah, most of them, most of them kind of got canceled. Yeah. I got up to Canada, um, back in March. As soon as I landed, the guy was like, yeah, man, they canceled the event. So, yeah. so yeah. And then it just got worse and worse from there. So, um, yeah, man. Yeah. That's crazy. How close are you to uh, MI40? I'm real close. Um, I go there every now and again. Uh, I'm about 20 minutes, 20 minutes away. Yeah. They don't let you, they don't let you just train there just by yourself? Because I know some of the pros uh, are given access to the, like, to the gym, gym. And like only them. Like, I think Patrick no, Moore train at a gym. No, nah, it's a, it's an open gym. Um, I used to train there, so the, the, the back story with that is uh, – my trainer used to be a, a, a trainer there, but, uh, you know, he got, um, he ended up doing really well. He ended up uh, training uh, Dave Batista, the actor, and Dave uh, ended up buying, like, a, a private place, and, like, he set up a gym there. So I go there now. Um, but every now and again, I still go by in my 40, like, if Joe, if my trainer's not in town or, um, or something like that, I'll still go to in my 40. It's an open gym now. Yeah, you just gotta pay twenty bucks for a day pass. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's closed down now because of the quarantine, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, once it's over, if y'all got, if y'all live in town, it's, it's, you just go by and it's, uh, it's free, not free, but it's open to the public. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm I, like, I guess I'm just saying, I'm surprised that they didn't give you a special key so you could go in there and like, do your own right thing. Right now, right now, yeah. That yeah, be nice. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to ask them because uh, they didn't do it for. Me. I don't think they did it for anybody, really. Okay. So, uh, 
yeah, I ain't trying to get them in trouble. I heard some people doing that and like, um, they still got in trouble. Like one of my buddies down in uh, Miami, he owns a gym and they said he couldn't even train in his own gym down there. Oh, really? <laughs> that's my stuff. Like, that's, I, that's that's like stuff. I would have been pissed off. Yeah, I'm like, yo, this is my, my, it's like my house. Like, it's my place. Mm-hmm. You know, we yeah. Yeah. Probably because people don't know how to set boundaries. So if I let you in, more than likely it'll be you and then somebody else and somebody else and put you all at risk. So that's true. That's probably that's true. Hey, man, if it's under 10 people, that was the rule, right? Just like less than 10 <laughs> people? Yeah. Yeah, so. Jeez. Yeah, so I just had to find a way. So I ended up there. I ended up going on, like, uh, Facebook Marketplace, and I, uh, you know, I found some pieces that I needed. And uh, I only bought one new thing. That was that lap pull-down machine on eBay. Uh, but everything else was used, so I got a really good deal on all of it. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um. I mean, you, you so like you kind of touched on it. I know I had a question about about that. When did you uh, so like with your training, like with your trainer Joe, like when did y'all link up? I think we've been together uh, maybe four. I want to say he hit me up right after the Tampa Pro because that's you know he he lived in Tampa. I didn't live in Tampa at the time, but I want to say he hit me up right after that. I won that show. Um, he just sent me a DM. He was like, yo, man, I think you, you know, you look great, but I see some things in your training that you can improve on. And, um, you know, if you ever want to come down to my 40, you know, I'll give you, you know, I'll train you for free. And um, <laughs> I really, I didn't, honestly, I didn't know him all that well at the time, but I think I went to like his Instagram page. I looked at what he had. I saw he was training with uh, Ben Pakulski and, you know, Ben was big at the time. Uh, I don't, I don't know if he was training with Dallas quite yet, but uh, he might have been. He might have been training with Dallas at that point. But, uh, yeah, I just, you know, I didn't know anything, man. And, like, I had, like, I wasn't arrogant or anything, you know. Um, I was <laughs> I was just trying to learn, trying to learn, and trying to grow. So I was like, yo, let me take this opportunity. So I would drive um, about six, six and a half hours um, once a month to go down to MR40 and I would, you know, pay for my own hotel and I would uh, spend the weekend and we would do two days while I was there. And I would just drive back on um, Sunday night and go to work on Monday. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that's crazy. Wait, so, because <laughs> I've seen how he trained. I just started following him. I've been following yeah. Ben and then I finally started to follow Joe on Instagram and I bought their little program from a long time back and I'm learning a lot now. And seeing the way that he kind of trains and the way that he puts you through exercises, like the hack squat, looked like death. Yeah. Uh, how do you even have the energy to do two a days? That don't even yeah, seem possible. Uh, well, you know, like it's a it's a learning thing, man. Like I, you know, it's funny. So um, one thing we he he programmed it in a really good way too. But on top of that, um, I wasn't able to push myself as far as I like I couldn't do two a days now. But um, back then, yeah, I, I uh, couldn't push myself the same, you know. And it, it, it's just like a mental barrier you got to kind of break through. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, those leg days, say, it took me like a long time to get. Even if I go away for a little bit and I come back, it's still like brand new to me. It ain't, it's, it's hard. It's definitely hard. <laughs> the leg I days. I watch. Is, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, yo, you got he's got good quads. Ben, ben had good quads. You know, but that's like the place of good quads there, yeah. But you came into the, uh, like, I guess you stepped on stage with big quads. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just That's a finger show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, nah, Ben Ben definitely trains harder than, like, he trains really hard. So, like, you know, he didn't, he, that was, leg day was like a thing there. Like, yo, if you're going to do legs in, in my 40, you got to go all out. Yeah. Oh, snap. I feel like I got to get Was he there. the only coach that um, ever contacted you? Like how how um, how do you training, yeah? You said for training wise, yeah, he was the only one I've had. Maybe I've only had one of the guy um, hit me up for coaching. That was uh, the Camel Crew out in Kuwait. One of the dudes there, the guy who trains Brandon Curry. Uh, yeah, a word. Yeah, because yeah, Brandon yeah, looked crazy right up. now. He actually hit me up that same year, but I was in the military, so I couldn't even go to Kuwait. So I was like, yeah. I don't even know point. Yeah. So would you do it now though? Because Brandon nah. Curry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, if I was in 212 or 
something like that are open, yeah. But I'm pretty much in my weight limit now. So like back back if I went in the military back then, yeah, it would have been a great idea because they could have put muscle on people. Yeah. But now I'm pretty I'm pretty much you know close to that weight limit, so it ain't a real I don't see a real big deal. Just to, the only reason I would go is just just to experience like how things are there, just mm-hmm. just to see how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Do you so what's your so what's your take on two twelve? Do you think you'll ever make that that leap? Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Um, I don't know, man. Like I was thinking, you know, back back when I first got into class, because I turned pro in bodybuilding. So back when I first started classic. I was like, yeah, yeah, I probably end up, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wasn't against it. I was like, but now, kind of getting older, I'm like, well, I'm pretty happy with where I am, like with my physique, mm-hmm. and um, and like I remember when I like was trying to gain and gain and gain, like it, it was a, it was a lot of work. I was really, really busy all the time. And stuff like my, like now I'm trying, I got a business and all that, and I'm like, I'm trying to focus on that. And I'm like, you know, trying to put on a, a good amount of size takes up a, a good amount of time as well. And I'm like, do I want to trade that off? Because the money ain't that much. The, the money thing ain't that different. You know, it's not a big money um, increase. Because, I mean, yeah, the show, so, like, you do make money, more a little more money show to show, but it's not a big difference, like I said. And on top of that, most, most bodybuilders don't make a living off of the money they make competing, like, from prize money. Unless you like Miss Olympia, uh, yeah. in 212, in the 212, you're not making money from competing really. Um, in open body building, it's a little different. You can make money from competing, but classic in 212 is not a, it's not as big. So just looking at it from a, like a business standpoint, um, especially with them taking 212 out, Ali Arnold, that's not a good look either. So I'm like, yo, what's the future? The future of the class, you know, 212 right now, but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now, man, I'm pretty happy where I am in Classic. It's growing. I'm doing, I'm finally doing better. Like, you know, uh, I'm finally getting to the point where uh, I'm placing, you know, well at like bigger, bigger shows, you know, um, like at the Arnold. Uh, people are predicting for, for me to play South Five at the Olympia. Um, yeah. So, so, well, where do you think, like, like so where do you think you'll fall? <laughs> Cause. I'm, I'm, so I so like this is just a pure guess and it all depends, man. But honestly, I feel I feel like uh, top five. I'm there. I'm really feeling confident about top five without a doubt. Um, and I just you know I just and this is based off how people did last year, which I know isn't the best the best way to do it because everybody looks different you know all the time. But based off of last year, I beat guys that beat guys in that top five. Um, so I'm feeling pretty confident, you know, about that. My goal definitely would love, I would love to be top three. Um, I definitely think I could do that. That would be like, I definitely think I could get anywhere from third to fifth this year. But, um, and I think in a couple of years, I can definitely you know, like be pushing for that that first place. It's just going to take me a little bit longer to get there. When, when you line up with these guys, who is it that you see that you say, damn, this is the only person that's going to give me a problem? <laughs> yo, yo, I, <laughs> cause I see you, know, you and I'm like, damn, bro, like, man, this guy here is crazy. So like, yeah, I'm just imagining, no you know, like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yo, you know, like, you know, for a fact, like, I know oh, this off season, I got to bring it, cause every time this guy get on stage, man, damn, yeah, yeah, man, it's, I mean, yo, like, right now, obviously, like, it's, you know, the way I see it is still like everyone who beat me this last time I went. Is is someone I need to look out for, I guess. Mm-hmm. But real, but like realistically, man, like I, you know, Chris, of course, Mr. Olympia right now. Breon, yeah. two time Mr. Olympia. Um, I think Steve, Steve is still a challenge, man. I beat Steve at the Arnold; he plays third. But Steve is still, is still definitely um, he someone looked, to look out for always. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely Steve always. Um, and I would say literally the only other person uh, would be this guy out in Cali, um, uh, Danny Uden. He beat me uh, the last time. I think he placed like fifth or sixth uh, last you know, year. I, I wasn't too impressed. 
I mean, by I'm him, but yeah, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I got Danny this year, but you never know, you never know. So um, we'll see, we'll see. I'm feeling pretty good though, because I mean, like you know, some people you don't worry about, they end up beating you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Look. So I gotta ask. It's not a low blow at all. But how do you feel about the Arnold? Because Alex came in there, and I think I seen him at the New York Pro last year, and I was shocked. I was like, "Oh, this dude is actually like, he's like surprisingly good." Um, you don't think yeah. he, he he gonna give you a hard time? Honestly, man, I didn't. At, you know, going into the show, I was more so concerned with Steve. I was like, "Yo, Steve is gonna be the guy." I thought Alice would get third. I thought Steve, me or Steve would be pushing for first. And um it was completely flipped. Yeah, it flipped completely. Yeah. completely. Um no, I like I like I like Alice, man. Um me and him got to hang out before we switched to classic. We did a guest posing out in uh El Salvador. We stayed like a week. We got to know each other. And uh, no, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. So I'm not I'm not upset that he won. And you know, um He's been doing a lot longer than me too, so Yeah. Uh, I didn't know um, he was a two twelve guy. Yeah, yeah. He won a lot of two twelve shows too. Um uh, well I don't know about a lot, but I think he won at least like two. I remember I remember one he won specifically. Um yeah, yeah, because he beat I forget the guy's name now, but he beat this one guy who had a uh, dark skin guy who had a uh, peck tear. And I yeah, but um nah, he's definitely uh he's definitely been a good athlete for a while. So what's your take on um? So I, this is, I guess, if I had to line you up, because like you're like a perfect blend, because you have a lot of mass and you also have the physique and the shape and the structure and all that. So uh, I guess my point is like, so the division kind of shifted when they gave it to Chris over um, Breon. Do you think? Do you think that's going to change the direction of what they're looking for? And they were just kind of waiting for Chris to get to where he is now. And now that's the new direction of classic. You know, man, um, I got, I think I got like a different, a different outlook on it. Like um, definitely. I think that um, personally, I think that kind of like in the seventies, how everyone there was. So if you look at the guys and I, I hate to compare classic to the, to the 70s because people start to think it's like exactly like back then but it's a little different but you look at the guys back then um everyone had different physiques you know but uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger looked different from Frank Zane Frank Zane looked different from Franco Colombo all those right. guys look completely different the, I think the thing is like you you can't say like there's a certain look you can just pick who is the best version of themselves and best fits best fit best fits the criteria um and honestly, that's going to be different for everybody, man. So, like, <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, I mean, just look at this last show, how um, half the people thought Chris should have won, half the people thought Breon should have won, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely don't think there's a, there's a certain look uh, that class physique is. I think it's more of a, like, an ideal or, like, uh, concept, you know, guys who, you know, kind of – embrace like a, it's just like a feeling more so than like oh you everyone has to look like chris bump said because look if you look at the top three they're all very different physiques you had chris yeah. you had brianna you had george george yeah. completely you know so it's it's literally bringing the best version of yourself um granted the best version of george isn't gonna be um chris unfortunately i think george last year was he couldn't have, he couldn't have done anything any better like, like you look at him, like you, you could say like, you looked at George and like, cause he's maxed out. So you, he couldn't add any muscle anywhere else. Yeah. So you're like, well, maybe he could have been more conditioned. No, he was literally the most no. conditioned guy. Yeah. Yeah. George is crazy. I thought he was actually going to, I thought he was actually going to upset both of them last year. I literally did um, too. I did too. I was, I thought the big chance of that happening too, man. I was like, yo, George. He was constant. He was ready for the show like six weeks out. <laughs> yeah, I see. I see the pictures now. When he still looks crazy, he, yeah, he can be so, a problem at two twelve. With Keon and um, Derek Lunsford, I think when when George steps in there, he gonna give dumb boy the a, a hard time, a real hard time. <laughs> Yo, Even the guy that like that just won too is gonna have a hard time against George. 
Yeah, Kamal. Yeah, Camille. Um, yo, so I definitely think Jumanjor, I think Joris definitely has a big chance of winning the, the 212 uh, this year. Um, without a doubt, man. <laughs> without a doubt. I was surprised. I didn't believe he could put on that much muscle um, in that time frame. But, man, he blew up already. Um, he may end up having to switch to the open eventually, man, which is it's crazy to hear, honestly. Like, that's what his coach, even his coach said. Um, but, yeah, I think, yeah, I definitely have him, like, doing very well, man. If if Derek can't get his, his shit together, man, with, with coming in, in shape, yeah. you know, because he, yeah, and I promise you, like, if he doesn't get it this year, it's, it's like, it's going to be really bad. Like, he's going to miss like that. Because everyone has, like, what do you call it? A, that uh, window. The window. That yeah. window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if he yeah, don't get it, it's now. Bad. You think the way how you guys are coming in condition and the physiques, when it comes to class of physique, you think it's causing a lot of people not to do bodybuilding? Yeah, I do. I do. You know, because even at the local they, shows, you rarely see like people do bodybuilding. I don't know if it's because they understand that what it's going to take. You know, you guys could come in 240, 225, 230, pill, dry, you know, insane compared to, you know, the, the people who got to do bodybuilding, they know the work they got to put in, what they got to do, what rock they got to take just to get to where they need to be at. For some people, it's like, man, I rather just do so, classic for real. Yeah, man, I think uh, – and. <laughs> So, like, a good example of that would be Chris Bumstead. You know, Chris Chris could have definitely went to the Open, probably. Um, and I think, too, like, um, I think it's more so, like, I do, I definitely agree with you, man. Like, there's definitely not a lot of bodybuilders anymore, especially when Classic came around. Yeah. And then uh, one, one thing I do think Classic is doing is it is taking a lot from the pro, especially on the pro side. It's it's taking a lot of uh, of like the the talent, like in the sense of like guys with great shapes. There are some, there are some coming back. Like um, there's a dude up in Canada, Quentin, Quentin um, up in Canada. He looks great, but a lot of the talent, like uh, they definitely decide. A lot of them decide to stay in classic, and I won't say. I don't want to say classic is easier because I definitely had it, haven't had it easier. Yeah. Um, it took me a long time to put on this muscle. I still ain't technically capped out yet. I'm pretty close, but it literally took me uh, a long time to get, to get to this point. But um, I do say, I do, I will say that once you, once you do reach that cap, mm -hmm. I would say it is a lot easier to maintain. Like you, all you gotta do is maintain that size you have. Whereas, and it's like, uh, whereas like, if you want to do bodybuilding, you know, that's a continuous thing from a lot of yeah. people. Like, you know, it does stay longer. Um, like for you, I you do. can walk around lean and just put on another 10 pounds compared to somebody got to put on 30, 40 pounds all season to come back down. Yeah. Lose. Now, you're right. But don't get me wrong, though. Like, some people are just born to do bodybuilding. Like, look at Regan, though. Regan tried to do classic. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Body, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. He just meant to be big. Some people genetically, man, like they're so like some people are like so so gifted. Like Keon's one of them too. Like that's why he's not in classic anymore. It's because he's so gifted on put, putting on muscle. Where the dude is still what he's like 23, 24. Oh yeah, he got a lot of silver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like guys like so like they still are you know good old bodybuilders coming up, but a lot of uh, um, a lot of them. Or staying in classic, I would say. I, mm -hmm. I do agree with that. Yeah. Do you think it's healthier to be uh, classic, or, I would say or can you be, people, uh, be just as healthy in the open? It depends. So, like, and it depends on it depends on a lot of things. So, like, one thing, like the subs you got to use. So, it really depends, man. It depends on the person. So, um, just so like I've seen people. I, Cause I'm a coach, so I've seen natural people, and I and I work with enhanced people too. I've seen natural people grow better than enhanced people. It's just really, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really? definitely possible. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely possible, man. Um, so it really depends on your genetics, like, and what. So like, um, I will say, like, certain people do have to use a lot, so, and uh, those people for those people, yeah, it's definitely unhealthy. Yeah. So that's that side, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it definitely. On top of that, it's still unhealthy because people ain't – even if you don't have to use a lot of, you know, supplements or chemicals, it's still not healthy being, like, 280 pounds or two or 300 pounds. You know what I mean? Right. That's yeah. a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. So um, just to kind of get that clarification, yeah, I would still say 
it's it's definitely more healthy to be like let's say for me I'm I'm five five. It's definitely regardless of how much I'm taking, it's still healthier for me to be like I'm like one eighty right now for classic compared to me being like uh, putting on an extra thirty pounds. You know? Yeah, think about that two twelve. You'd have to probably get up to like two thirty and then yeah, cut yeah, down yeah. to two twelve, and that's a lot to be carrying around at five five. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of how I look at it too. Um, yeah, it's definitely that. Definitely does play a part too on you. Um, how often do you tell your your like? Do you have your natural guys get blood work done? I do, I do. Um, I, I mean, I would love to get all of them get it done all the time, but um, especially if I can't pinpoint something or um, I think you know something seems out of norm with like they're not losing weight or something like that, I definitely. Um, have them get checked out uh, to see what's going on. But I think everyone, honestly, I think everyone should get it done, um, at least to kind of see, like, because, you know, you never know, like, someone may not be putting on muscle, maybe because they just have naturally low tests, and that's people like that, um, or some something's out of whack, because um, everybody's body's different, man. Maybe they uh, their um, thyroid is running low, or, you know, you never know. Um, so it's definitely always good, a good idea to get blood work done. Um, even just to see, like, you know, just to get a baseline reading. Like, maybe you do feel healthy now, and so you get the baseline to see how you normally are. And then maybe, you know, down the road, you don't feel so hot, so you get more blood work done. He's like, oh, shit, you know, this is lower, this is higher, this is this. Right. You know, okay, so this isn't where it's supposed to be. I need to go to a doctor and figure out why, you know. Right, right. So, so uh, yeah, I definitely think for natural people, it's a good idea, too. That's so, with you being That's a competitor good. and a coach, what would you um, change about the classic to beat the, the classic physique division if you could? What would you change about it? Because you know how the guys get back and y'all talk and stuff like that. I'm just curious, like yeah. as a so competitor, the stuff like I would, prize I money, stuff. like what? Yeah, what yeah, all, yeah, definitely. No, that would be money. one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a hundred percent true prize money. I think more so the stuff I would want to change, it would affect like every class in general. Like I would love to see certain things change with the way uh, shows are put on. Um, I would love it like to be more of a production, like a little bit more. Granted, I know it's a lot, it's hard because the shows, you know, venues and paying for everything is expensive. Yeah. But I would love to get like better venues. It's like rather than just like a school or something that some shows you go to. Yeah. Um, I would like it to have more of a, a, a schedule uh, for shows in the sense that, like, say, for instance, I wanted to do more than one show um, after the yarn but it's very – it's not good to stay contest lean for, you know, a long period of time. There wasn't, there wasn't another show for another five weeks. That's not, that's not ideal. Um, back in the day um, – for bodybuilding, it wasn't too long ago. It was maybe like four four years ago. They used to have after the Olympia, they used to have like this tour called the Grand Prix tour. And yeah, to, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they should definitely have some more stuff like that. I think um, I would definitely love some a couple other things too. Maybe a little bit more promotions of the athletes with like going into a show. Yeah, you know, like a lead up. That'd be that. awesome. Yeah. Wait, like, can I ask you something? Um, so with the Grand Prix, do you think it would be possible for current bodybuilders today to actually, like, even classic physique? And y'all don't get paid enough at all. Um, <laughs> but at, at any rate, like, if you were to do the Grand Prix, uh, do you think competitors would actually be, uh, be able to make a living uh, from competing? So, like, you get lean and you stay lean for, like, three months and do, uh, what, like, six shows in three months? Or do you think you could earn enough to to live pretty decent on that? So, well, it depends on the price. If it's the same prize money, no. <laughs> it's the same prize, definitely not. Because <laughs> by the time y'all get that, y'all got to pay everybody off. Well, yeah. So, like, we get um, – what's the name? Alice got seven grand for the Arno. Um, what was that? Seven times <laughs> – so yeah, that's definitely not a lot. But seven times six, no, that's not. It's not enough. That's not even fifty Gs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get yeah. a, net, a regular nine to five for that. <laughs> and that's the highest. That's the second highest. I don't know the Olympia. They pay more, but that's the second highest pro show, you know, pay wise. So, uh, so what do you think? Uh, like the Rock Show was going to do f- 
for you guys? Um, it's interesting. I've heard rumors, man, that we gonna. That, I've heard rumors that uh, it'll be sixty-five thousand uh, for, for yeah for every class. So that's why yeah. you see a lot of that's why you see a lot of bodybuilders not wanting to do it. Like big, like Brandon, he said he didn't really want to do it. Dex is not into it. Phil Phil's pro- helping promote it, but he's not doing it. It's because that's actually a lot less for them, but for for every other class, that's a good amount of money. Um, so yeah, I heard they're doing six sixty five uh, k across the board. Um, I don't know. I don't know though. That's just a rumor so far. That's, but I heard it from I heard it from a couple of people, and I heard it from Brandon. So I I would imagine he would know. But um, no, nah, I don't think it would be enough for us to <laughs> the grand people would be enough for us to live off of though. So how do you balance it all? So you got all right. So I'm just like just throw it out there. So you uh, compete as a professional. You have um, clients that so regular people and people that do uh, shows, right? Mm-hmm. And then you also got your clothing brand, and you write for somebody, right? For hypertrophy coach, or you do content there too? I do content for him. Yeah. So um, all right, how you balance all that? <laughs> It's tough, man. So, like, the the main source of income is definitely uh, the coaching. Um, kind of the, the shows, I mean, it's cool bonuses throughout the year. The guest posings are cool bonuses. But that's definitely – I don't rely on that at all. It's just something extra nice to have um, in the bank. But definitely coaching is number one. Um, sponsorships are good, too. But I still, um, coaching is definitely, like, the biggest thing for me right now. Uh, how do you how do you manage your coaching? Um, so I, I use this app. It's called uh, or website. It's called FitLog.ca. It's made by another bodybuilder, so it's really intuitive uh, um, for for coaching bodybuilders because it's made by a bodybuilder. Because people, a lot of people use my fitness pal, but it's not great because they got you can only do three meals and then the two snacks and something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So his 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 thing is really well really uh well made. So I use that. Um, on top of that, um, I have about ten clients five days a week, kind of uh, shaking anywhere from ten to fifteen. Uh, so I kind of spread it out that way. I don't do our most people you see they do check-ins on one day. Um, I split it up because I definitely couldn't get through uh, my clients in one day. Um, How many clients are you uh, working with right now? Right now, because of this, I lost a couple. So I think last time I checked, I have uh, around fifty to fifty-five at the moment. Yeah, God damn, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's a lot. You know, and they're, you know they're all funny, virtual man. clients, right? You say what? They're all virtual clients. Like you know, I yeah, mean, they're before, all, yeah, I don't, I don't do any in-person stuff besides just some posing um, in person here and there. But no, it's all online. Uh, yeah, I, I think the most I've had was I, so I, I look. I got the, I use this this thing. It says I have about twenty people on pause right now. That's from the virus. They just put their um, payments on pause. So I guess I, I normally have around seventy. I don't want any more than that. That's oh, okay. as many as I can. I've heard so you got them, on more. You got well, them like on a subscription plan, right? Yeah, yeah. So so okay. there's a couple things I've noticed. Uh, before that, people would forget to pay, yeah. and um, and it's it's really tough keeping track of all that. I didn't couldn't keep track, so like because um, that would add like literally if I had to do like check of someone paid every single time, that would probably add maybe two three hours to my day every check in, you know. So um, I finally figured that out. I got that straight, and um, so I have that. It, it's the, the the what how I do it, a lot of this is it's really easy once you get stuff automated. So like people, they buy my program, then it's automatically set up for automatic payments. They automatically get an email sent to them on how, you know, um, with a questionnaire. And I, I really, I wrote out like a uh, newcomer's guideline. So it tells them like what to expect from me, what I expect from them, uh, certain like seasons they can do, foods they can do, swap out. It tells them a lot of different stuff. It's like maybe I think it's five pages worth of information. So you got a lot of systems in place. The, re- the reason yeah. why I'm asking is that a lot, a lot of the people that watch the podcast are actually personal trainers. So a lot of people don't know how to make that transition from training all these clients in person 
to mm -hmm. a virtual coaching business, like how do you make that if you don't have like the systems in place to manage all of them? Like if yeah, you were managing yeah. 50 people with emails, mm -hmm. I I'm sure you'd, you'd be pulling your hairs out. <laughs> so yeah, definitely, man. And, and that's what got me how to figure out what worked for me because I definitely a lot of old school coaches could do it. Like they would work on Excel. They would answer everything through email, but that didn't work for me. I don't know. But so what I ended up doing is I use, uh, I text everybody, I use WhatsApp. And um, WhatsApp is great. It's uh, I keep it separate. I like to keep that separate from my personal, like normal text messages. So all my clients are just on WhatsApp. Um, they send me photos to there. Uh, I can do like um, group, like I can like text them all at once if there's something crazy going on in my life. Um, and I can also, if I'm, and if if you like typing, you can. Uh, I can add WhatsApp to my computer as an app. And they can pop, it can just be like a, the same thing, like an email. Uh, what else do? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, the big stuff there. Um, definitely, definitely the big stuff. It so definitely has a system. But I did want to say real quick um, okay. there's a guy named, I think his name is Mark Coles. Um, if you're a personal, actual in person personal trainer, um, he is probably the one of the best guys to listen to and learn from. He's out in the UK, but he has podcasts, he has an Instagram, and uh, he kind of talks about making that transition you're talking about from um, in person to slowly transition to more online because obviously uh, in person training, you know, it takes your time. You only have so much time in a day, and um, def you know, online coaching definitely takes up less of your time. So mm -hmm. um, he definitely talks about that a lot. Yeah. So oh. where where right now, like in your online coaching business, are you kind of, I don't want to say wasting time, but are there any like tedious activities that you're doing that like, you're like, damn, I wish I could pay somebody else to do this or automate <laughs> this. Like, where are you not automating? Oh, man, let's see. Um, one, well, I think I'm doing, I don't think I can really automate too much more. Uh, what I would really like to eventually do is have like a uh, like an exercise library. It's just it's just me actually, like you said, paying someone to do it. So like I would like to, because uh, some people don't know certain exercises or maybe they're doing something kind of wrong. And normally I just I just send them to someone else's content that they have. But I would really like to have a uh, a feature where you know I'm performing each exercise and I kind of talk about it. And again, like if they have a question, they can go and watch that. Um, besides that, I don't think there's much um, I need to automate. I've, uh, luckily, I've been you know I've been doing this maybe four years now, and um, I've been learning ways to automate stuff. Like I said, the automatic you know emails when you purchase, the questionnaires are already done. I use Google. Um, Google uh, Google has some really cool stuff uh, questionnaire stuff you can do. So that works out great. Um, I love that. I found that out from a guy. Um, uh, last year, his name's Brian out in Hong Kong. I did a seminar there, and he told me he uses that, like Google Sheets or something. I can't remember, but uh, yeah. literally, it's it's really yo, it's it's because yeah. like, I was doing like I would email them like a Word document, and like you know they would sometimes it would get weird sometimes, and so like nah, it's all in one place. I can like literally move questions around whenever I feel like it. I can add questions, real simple, and it's automatically oh. saved. I don't have to email anyone it's just automatically there which i love it and that's, uh that's dope um yeah. so we're gonna take a quick break and come right back for part two <laughs> 